Hey everyone, we are back with .NET Conf 2018. Veronica, how's it going? I'm good. Hi. Hi everyone. Yes, yeah, so well, we have Veronica talking about Cognitive Services and Samarin. Tell us a little more about that. Sure. So, hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about cognitive services in Xamarin applications. And I'm Veronika Kolesnikova. So, here is a little bit about me. I got my master's recently and my master's in information technology. I started my career. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, back to information about me. I started my career um, as a quality assurance engineer and then I moved to development. Now I have more than six years of development experience. Mostly I'm working with Microsoft technologies like C Sharp, .NET, SQL. Recently I started playing with Xamarin. Uh, but for my day job, I'm working with .NET based CMSs like EpiServer and Sitecore. At some point, I was using PHP, MySQL, Drupal, and Ruby on Rails. Um, I am not working with those technologies right now, but maybe I'll get back to them at some point. And my hobbies are dancing, traveling, and aerial yoga. So here's the agenda for next probably 45 minutes. I'll start with artificial intelligence and machine learning, and I'll tell you some basic information about them. Then we'll move to basics of Microsoft Cognitive Services. And then I'll tell you about groups and individual services there. Then we'll move to specifics of integrating Microsoft Cognitive Services with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms applications. And then the best part, custom vision service demo. So definitely still stay till the end. So let's talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning. All big tech companies are investing lots of time and money into artificial intelligence and machine learning. Those are big things currently, and we all kind of understand what's going on there. Uh, we have lots of tools available, but sometimes it might be confusing how artificial intelligence relates to machine learning. Are they working together? Are they completely separate? Uh, let me actually clarify that for you. And I'll start with artificial intelligence. So technically, artificial intelligence has more than 50 different definitions. And in general, it's something that we as humans are good at, but machines are not. So we are trying to mimic human intelligence using logic, if then rules, decision trees, and other cool stuff. Next, we have machine learning. And machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And basically, it's a combination of statistics and algorithms. So when we use those techniques, uh, we enable machines to improve our tasks with experience. And next, we have deep learning. And deep learning is a subset of machine learning. So when we have lots of data, we are trying to organize it and create neural networks with data nodes. And using those neural networks, we enable our machines to perform more complicated tasks like speech and image recognition. And cognitive services are based on deep learning. So what are Microsoft Cognitive Services? I know yesterday uh, we had a couple of sessions about machine learning and cognitive services, but if you didn't have a chance to connect, uh, then let me tell you uh, a little bit about them. Microsoft Cognitive Services are sets of 
APIs and SDKs that you can use to make your application smarter uh, and make them more interactive for your users. They are really easy to use. You just need to get a key and write a couple of lines of code and you are getting access to all those cognitive services through REST APIs. All those cognitive services are really flexible. So it doesn't matter if you are a hardcore iOS developer or you can't live without Python, you can still use Microsoft Cognitive Services and use all their available functionality. Also, all those Microsoft Cognitive Services are tested and created by super smart people from Microsoft Research, BIN, and Azure Machine Learning. Those people actually got their degrees in machine learning, and I'm sure they know what they're doing. So we don't have to get our uh, degree in machine learning and spend years um, digging those topics. Uh, so thanks to those people, they are great. Also, um, on, online, you can get quality documentation about cognitive services. They have sample code, um, huge community support, really awesome examples online. Um, you can check MSDN, you can go to GitHub, and if you notice that something is not right or you want to improve something, you can actually get the code, fix it, and submit a pull request. I'm sure Microsoft team will be super happy to have your code there. Now let's move to groups and individual services. There are officially five groups of cognitive services, but I personally think there are six of them, and I'll explain you why a little later. Currently, if I'm not mistaken, there are 24 individual services available. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to uh, tell you about each and every individual service, but you can go ahead, uh, check the website, and see what services um, you are interested in and what services you would like to use. And we'll start with Vision Services Group. And it's all about visual information. And first one here, really interesting, Computer Vision API. This service actually can um, detect objects on your images, and also it can perform optical character recognition. So if you have written text somewhere, you have a picture of it, you can just upload that picture to the service and it will translate it to actual text. Next one here is Face API. And recently, uh, they integrated Emotions API into Face API, so now, it can detect specific people on your images and at the same time check their emotions. So you see how happy or sad they are. That is really useful. If you check all those vision cognitive services, you didn't find anything that can be suitable for you, or you have specific set of images or you want to uh, search and get specific information from those images, you can go ahead and use custom vision service. Um, and using custom vision service is really interesting. You can feel yourself like you're actually a uh, machine learning expert because you can Upload your images, you can train the model yourself, you can export it, and uh, we'll dig deeper into that later uh, during the demo. And I'm sure it will be really uh, straightforward and um, really easy to use. And here is the example from Cognitive Services website. Um, and it's an example of Computer Vision API. 
there you can just go to cognitive services website, find that specific uh, cognitive service, computer vision API. You can either upload your own image right on the page, or you can use um, images that are provided there on the page. And then you can see the output. You can see JSON and you can see what computer vision API returns to you. Um, so you, you don't have to actually get the key. You don't have to write any code. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to even use Postman. You can just go to the website, see um, the JSON that the service returns. You can see uh, lots of information there. Most of applications don't need that much, but you know, if you want, you can just go crazy and use all that information. Next group here is speech, and it's all about um, spoken information. Um, the, there are several of them that are really interesting for uh, me personally. Uh, first of them is speech to text. This one is pretty straightforward. So your users can use your application. Uh, maybe it's a bot, um, can talk to your bot, and then your bot is going to use speech to text API to translate speech to text and then to maybe pass it along so other tools can analyze the text. Next one here is uh, speech translation. So this service can actually translate speech to other languages. And actually, the whole speech suite was used in a new add-on for PowerPoint. It's really convenient if you travel into a foreign country and you don't know language, but you still need to present your PowerPoint, you have your slides. So that add-on can actually translate your slides or you can set up uh, subtitles. So that add-on will show uh, translated subtitles right on top of your presentation. So attendees can see what you are talking about, or they have an opportunity to scan a QR code with their mobile devices and see those subtitles right there. They can also ask your questions on their um, device from their devices um, and you'll see those questions you can answer them um, really useful tool I definitely recommend to check it out and here's an example from cognitive services website an example of speech to text here you have option either to play samples that are provided on the website, or you can record um, your speech, and then you can see how the service works. You also have an opportunity to select language, language there. Really useful. Um, it's all on the website, all online. You can go and check it out there. And next group here is language. And that is all about language analytics. And first cognitive service here is Lewis. I'm sure most of you heard about it. It's really popular right now. It's widely used um, in bot design and development. Also, it's used in virtual assistant skills creation. Language Understanding Intelligence Service, or LUIS, can understand intent and can parse those little um, variables of maybe time and place from your um, user's utterances. So your user can um, talk to your bot, then you use speech to text, you're translating um, spoken word to text, and then pass the text to Louis, and then Louis 
will understand what your user wants and based on that it will return um, information. Uh, you can um, train Louis, you can um, upload sample um, intents and sample variables. So uh, that is really useful um, and definitely check it out. I personally used it for Cortana skills creation. Um, it works great. Then next one here is Bin Spell Check API. This service is really useful. I think everyone should use that. I have lots of spelling mistakes all the time. So definitely go and check it out, especially if your users need to write a lot and it's important for them to uh, spell everything correctly. Next one here is Text Analytics API. And this kind of service provides basic analytics um, for your text, like a number of um, letters or number of words in your text. That can be really useful if uh, your users work with text a lot. Okay, and here's the example of Lewis. It's also from the website, Cognitive Services website. You can um, either type a command or you can pick one of predefined commands there. And it's really interesting here because you are not only seeing the JSON response from the service, you also can see how it actually works. So here um, I picked switch all lights to green and you see that on the left, um, the light was turned green, right? And also JSON here, so you know what you're working with, what kind of data you're getting from the service. Okay, so next is knowledge group. And here we have only one cognitive service right now. And it's Q&A Maker. Q&A Maker is also widely used for bot design and development and also virtual assistant skills creation. Um, Q&A Maker um, you can use when you know that your users mostly ask you about the same questions over and over and they want to see, they want to get same answers again and again. And you probably already have a few page on your website or you have a PDF document somewhere with all those questions and answers. So you can just upload the PDF document with questions and answers or provide a link to your page, um, your FAQ page. And then this uh, cognitive service will parse it, split it into questions and answers and voila. Your users can go talk to your bot, um, type their questions, and get their answers right away. And you don't have to do a lot there. And here is an example from Cognitive Services website. Um, they have questions here, uh, some examples. And on the right, you can see preview of the answer. Also, you can ha you can uh, get a JSON response, so you see what kind of information you're gonna work with. Okay, next group is search, and that's the biggest group because um, all kind of services they probably started with Bing Research uh, team. Um, and then they grew into actually cognitive services um, as we see them right now. And here you have all kinds of searches. You have been image search and news search and web search. If you need some specific information in your search or you wanted to search through specific data set, or want to create some kind of customization there, 
you have access to bin custom search there definitely um, go and check it out okay so we went through all five main groups of cognitive services and now that's the sixth group it's called labs i personally think it's um official group it should be an official group because that's the future go in there and check in labs you can see where cognitive services are going what can be next step there what researchers are currently working on all those labs are experimental so i don't recommend you to use it in production environment but definitely go and check them out um, definitely provide feedback and maybe send me a pull request with your fixes and your code so one day one of those labs or maybe all of those labs can become um, actual cognitive services and there are a couple of those um, i really like uh, for example project gesture if you're using project gesture your users don't have to use keyboard or mouse anymore they don't have to use their touch screens anymore that is insane they can just use their camera and using gestures they can interact with objects on the screen they can enlarge those objects they can move them around that is real cool and uh, they have awesome video on the website so you can see how it actually works next next one here is project event tracking and this um, lab actually provides information ab about events based on uh, wikipedia entry entries and another really interesting and really really useful one is project url preview so when you use that um, service you enable uh, preview for uh, pages that your users are trying to load so they are not loading any malicious content they are not loading any um, adult content um, they can preview the page before actually loading it so this one is really useful too and there are 13 labs available currently on cognitive services website and i think six are available at ailabs.microsoft.com definitely go and check them out so now you know everything about cognitive services and i'm sure you're ready to just start and go crazy check them all out work with all of them because they all are awesome right hey veronica there's a yes? there's a question on the chat that i think it's a good place to ask about it uh okay my wording 94 is asking are cognitive services provided by Microsoft maintainable? What if, for example, speech to text service uh, needs, uh, needs more learning on, Ara on, on the Arabic language? How can we maintain that? Is that something that Microsoft needs to fix or add? Or is that something as the end developers we can do and cooperate? So as, as the services reach a certain point, how do we do we wait for Microsoft to add things or as something us as a community, do we add them? So actually, it's a good question. There are several options, but definitely use them all. The, a little trick there is the more you're using the service, the better it gets. So if you integrate in it um, with all your applications, and you're using it a lot and you have a specific group of users, definitely those services will learn uh, from experience and they will get better. Also, if you have some um, questions or some issues with um, code there, then um, 
definitely submit your questions on the website or um, submit your pull request if you want to contribute. Um, Microsoft is really responsive to comments and concerns. Um, so that's also an option there. Thank you so much. That's a great answer. Any other questions? No, no questions right now. Go ahead and continue on. Well, this is really, really great. Everybody's engaged. Okay, awesome. I'm glad oh, you like it. Oh, and by it. the way, uh, McGuardy94 says, thank you so much for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, so all those cognitive services are available in Azure. So if you have Azure subscription, you can go to Azure portal right now and just search for specific cognitive services or check AI and cognitive services group and see all those services there. There is also a free tier available for all those cognitive services. It depends um, on um, each service, how many transactions um, allowed there for free. For example, for computer vision API, free tier includes uh, 5,000 transactions per month. But before signing up, definitely go and check the documentation. They have a um, calculator there so you can see how um, much you're going to spend on um, this or that service. And actually, I want to tell you that 5,000 transactions per month are more than enough for testing and playing. Definitely not enough for production environment. Because once your users start um, using your app, um, then um, all those transactions are flying just like that. <laughs> and if you, for some reason, don't have Azure, Azure subscription, then go get it. <laughs> but Seriously, you can try cognitive services uh, without Azure subscription. You can go to cognitive services website and um, try all those services for free. And free option um, is available for a month. So you can play with those services. You can get the same keys from the website as you can get from Azure portal. And another cool thing here is custom vision service. It actually has mobile model expert. So you can export your model um, as a um, TensorFlow file or a CoreML file. So you, you can either access custom vision service with your custom trained model using API like any other service, or you can download your pre-trained model and put it on your server, for example. So even if you don't have internet connection, your um, model will still work and um, it will um, return results to your users. Okay, and here's a big picture of Microsoft AI platform. You can see that cognitive services is just a small part of it and it's pre-built AI. You also have access to conversational AI, like bot services. But if you're really experienced with uh, machine learning, you know a lot about it, you are ready to build your own models, ready to um, train them, play with them, go crazy, you can use uh, custom AI, and it's um, Azure machine learning. Also, Azure provides the whole infrastructure for you to work with, like AI on data, um, all kinds of databases, Cosmos DB, data lakes, also AI compute power, like Spark and IoT Edge, uh, different kinds of CPU, GPU, everything that you might need. They also have pre-built virtual machines on Azure with everything you might need. So you don't need to set up anything yourself, just spin up a virtual machine and work with models, build your um, machine learning um, 
models, train them, work with them, everything. Also, you can have uh, access to coding and management tools like uh, video tools for AI and Azure Machine Learning Studio. And you have access to deep frameworks like TNTK and also to some third-party frameworks like TensorFlow and Coffee. Okay, so that is all about cognitive services specific part. Now I'm gonna move to specifics of integrating Microsoft cognitive services with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms applications. So you, I hope you all know the difference between Xamarin and Xamarin Forms and Xamarin Forms we're trying to share as much code as possible, but sometimes we need um, to tweak it here and there. If you want to tweak it specifically for device and if it's um, a front end change, then you can use device class and here I have an example of it. If you want to access um, platform or environment specific functionality, then you can use dependency services and dependency services give you access to all kinds of uh, environment specific functionality for Android, iOS and universal Windows platform. You can access camera and location and settings, all, um, all that awesomeness there. And pretty much you need to connect to camera and microphone and other device specific um, parts in order to work with cognitive services. Because usually you are providing um, images or you are providing some um, information from microphone like user speech or um, any other information, maybe location based information to the service. Okay, where to start? So now if you're using, um, if you're building your app with uh, Xamarin Forms and you're trying to share as much code as possible, now you don't have to use um, dependency services for everything. Lots of really talented developers went out there and created common APIs. So you can have access to microphone and camera and settings and all other stuff. You have all a list of common APIs online. Um, they're all on GitHub. You can talk to developers. You can um, maybe submit your pull request with your code changes and updates. So that is really awesome. I used um, Xamarin plugin media that was created by James Montemagnum. Um, he, this uh, specific plugin uh, gives you access to camera and also uh, gives you access to your user's media folder on their device. I used that one for when I worked with computer vision API, but you can also use it with um, custom vision services and uh, whenever you want to connect to camera. But now we have Xamarin Essentials and I hope you checked uh, James Montemagno session uh, two days ago. He was talking about Xamarin Essentials. There is still on preview, but I, I heard that they're releasing them soon. Uh, so stay tuned and you know, Xamarin Essentials, they're just one DLL one new get package for all uh, your device specific functionality. Um, you can go to website, you can check what Xamarin Essentials library actually has and what kind of functionality you can access using Xamarin Essentials. And if you are using cognitive services and you try and connect them to your application, you definitely need to get a NuGet package, right? And in order to find those NuGet packages, you need to search for Project Oxford. Project Oxford is original name of cognitive services. 
And here you can see that I used project Oxford.vision for computer vision API. But you, you have speech recognition and common and emotions. They don't have emotions anymore because they're part of face API. Um, but I, I'm sure you have Project Oxford uh, face API there. OK, that's it. And let's move to the demo. So here you can just um, I'm going to show you custom vision um, custom vision example and how you can use custom vision service with your um, Xamarin applications. I already have um, a couple of projects here, but when you go first to that website, you can create new project, type name of the project type description, and then you can select um, resource group. Um, it's actually, for me, it's connected to my um, Azure subscription. Um, but you can create new resource group. You can get a limited trial. A limited trial is um, perfect for playing with uh, the service and seeing how it all works. You have two project types here uh, and project detection is on preview currently. You can create uh, different classification types like multi-label and multi-class and all kinds of domains here. If you are planning to import your uh, custom pre-trained model, uh, you need to select compact if you have all of those domains without compact, then you won't be able to export those models. But uh, there is an, a little secret there. You can always change your domain if you want to. And here I already have my project set up. It's called CATS. So if you are not a CATS fan or you are more like a dog person, I'm sorry. I'm a big cats fan, so I created a cats um, example here with all kinds of cats. The only part is that I'm not really good with their breeds, so I just classify them based on their appearance. Like for example, here I have bicolor orange. When you click it, you can see all of them. And um, I uploaded all those images to the project. You can do it with that button, add images. And you have your images here. I have the whole folder. And for example, this one, you open it, and then you can tag it. You can write a couple of tags if you're trying to classify them uh, by a couple of um, options there. I have only uh, one tag, um, and here I have predefined tags because I already used them. I tag it with um, Angora, and I'm uploading that one file here. Done. So now it's part of my set. And you can see all your tagged images, all your untagged images that maybe some images got left out and you didn't tag them. So you can uh, filter them and tag them here. <clears throat> you can select images, you can add tags here. Uh, and when you actually upload all images and tag them, you can train your model. My model is already pre-trained. And um, then you can, um, you can um, quick test it. And you can um, get an image here and it will return you the information. So most likely it's Angora. Here you also have performance overview. You see uh, precision information and uh, recall information. 
Hey, Veronica. There's a really good question as you're demoing this from Hegar Delgada. He's asking, will it be possible to add images that we don't have in our PC? Do we have to download the images and then upload them? Or can we pull them from an API or from some other data source to be able to process them? So I believe you can only get them from your PC. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but um, looks like that's only from your PC. Gotcha. So right now, as the way the, the product stands, if we need to do any of those checkings or anything like that, we have to manually do it, at least and train the system so we can then um, get the information that we need, right? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so moving forward, the performance. So here you can um, set up your threshold. Um, you can create your iterations. Then you get information about precision and recall. And also some analytical information about performance per tag. Um, and here you can see all your predictions when you actually tested your model. And here we're going back to performance tab and here you have expert button. So you expert uh, your pre-trained custom model as CoreML for iOS, as TensorFlow for Android, as Onyx for Windows ML, and as Docker file if you want to use it on Azure IoT Edge, Azure Functions and Azure ML. I already downloaded uh, my TensorFlow model. So I'm gonna jump into my Visual Studio here. And here I have my um, Xamarin Custom Vision Solution. And actually that is um, Xamarin Android um, application. Um, again, um, I want to just make it clear, you can either export your model so it, it can be stored on your user's device or on your specific server, or you can just access uh, your custom vision model through API. Um, since I downloaded um, the model as TensorFlow, I can um, I created here um, Xamarin application for Android. And here in assets folder, I actually put those two files for um, TensorFlow, uh, model.pb and labels.txt. It all came from my custom vision model. And here I wrote really simple, really straightforward code. Um, I'm creating a um, structure here with um, label and confidence because that's what we are gonna display. And then I am connecting to camera here. So um, you'll see that there'll be a screen, really simple screen with just pretty much one button. You click, you take a picture, and then you actually send in the picture to your model and here I'm actually using, um, let me show you here. I am using um, Android um, TensorFlow um, library. Um, there is also a couple of other um, TensorFlow libraries for C Sharp developers like, um, C -sh um, like one created by Miguel de Casa. It's really popular. Uh, I don't think it, it currently supports um, Xamarin, uh, but I'm looking forward when it actually starts supporting that. And here I am getting back to my code. I'm actually getting the um, up, getting the model and opening the labels file. And I am working with um, the image that I get from I got from my camera. Here we are normalizing the image. 
Um, actually, TensorFlow requires um, images to be normalized in a specific way. So um, with specific size and um, some specific values here. Um, you can resize the image, um, get those values. Um, that is pretty straightforward. Then you are actually fitting the values to your model. You um, fit in your image to the model and then you're analyzing it. And from the model, you are getting back um, labels, um, meaning uh, those tags that we saw um, in the portal. We're getting labels and we're getting a level of confidence there. And then in order to uh, get the one and only um, answer there, we actually sort those results by level of confidence and we're returning only the one um, that the model is more confident about. And actually, let's see how it all works. Let me start it here in my Android emulator. Unfortunately, I don't have any cats right now next to me, but I prepared. So I printed a couple of pictures of cats and we'll see how it all works. Okay. Okay, hi. If you forgot how I look like, <laughs> that's me. And that is my cat today. And I'm gonna take a picture. Um, okay. It's better when you have actual cat. I don't have one. So we are working with whatever we have, right? Okay, so the model um, thought that that was bicolor orange and the confidence is pretty low, 3.3%. It's not a real cat, it's just a picture. Now we have, um, I don't have enough light probably here, so the confidence is pretty low but uh, the model returned the information that that was bicolor orange cat. And that is pretty accurate, right? Even when the confidence is not that high. And I think I'm ready for more questions here. Do we have any questions online? No, we do not. Go ahead, continue. This is this is really great. We were just talking about the the awesomeness of the demo. How you know you brought the picture up and it picked it up and it had all the the uh, confidence and everything. This is really really awesome. Thank you. Now, let me ask so you this: here, as, as, some, as someone who yeah. doesn't do Xamarin, how can I? How can I quickly get started with this outside of the user NuGet packages? You know, how can I, is there, I, is there something that I can just download or clone from GitHub and be able to get started on this? How would I about to, you know, go about doing something like that? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So actually there are lots of examples online, uh, lots of articles, lots of um, GitHub examples. I have my, personal GitHub account, um, you can go and get that project that I currently showed, um, just showed a couple of minutes ago, a um, couple other projects also. Um, there are projects available uh, from uh, people who actually work with it, with Xamarin every day. Um, they're really awesome. Also, there are lots of courses online like um, in Xamarin University courses or uh, plural site courses. So lots of information available here. I have a couple of useful links. Um, so you can see that is Cognitive Services website and uh, you can see documentation and um, an article about uh, optical character recognition. 
also if you want to do more mobile development even if you doing it with Xamarin you can take iOS and Android specific development courses so you know more about the environment and just some information about me so follow me on Twitter and send me all your questions and reach me through LinkedIn um, yeah so I started answering the question and then I just went crazy sorry <laughs> Sorry, I was just unmuting, pushing all the different buttons to make the magic happen with this uh, stream. <laughs> Thank you so much, Veronica. This has been really great. And all of you out there who are watching us live on Twitch, um, we got more stuff coming up, tons of sessions. So please get engaged. Ask your questions on the Twitch channel so that we can monitor them here and relay them back to the speakers. Any closing thoughts? Um, that was great. Thank you for the opportunity. I hope everyone um, liked my session. And if you guys have any questions, definitely find me on Twitter. Uh, send me your questions and we'll chat more about that. Thank you so much, Veronica. And thank you guys for watching. Thank we'll you. We'll be right back.